Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, hopefully having an amazing day. With the RTX 30 series, Nvidia faced a lot of criticism that the top-end SKUs didn't really have that much of a performance leap over one another. For example, the RTX 3080 and 3090 were relatively close to one another in terms of raw compute performance. Obviously, though, there was quite a gulf in memory. But the RTX 40 series, well... <laughs> Let's just say things have changed significantly. A whole bunch of new specifications for the 4090, 4080, 16, as well as 12 gigabyte models have leaked, including clock frequencies. And to say that there is a gap between the RTX 4090 and RTX 4080, would be to say something like the Grand Canyon is a small hole in the ground. In other words, it doesn't quite do it justice. And we're gonna get right into it, along with a bunch of other stuff after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So let's start things with the RTX 4090, AD102-300, 16,384 CUDA cores, and boosts up to 2,520 megahertz, 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory and this is clocked at 21 Gbps. Now, it seems that the TGP of this board is 450 watts, but according to information that has been received by videocards.com, it can go up to 660 watts. Now, do note, this is going to be apparently via BIOS, and this does match what I've mentioned a couple of times in my videos, that AIBs seem to have had like a BIOS that was available that seemed to crank the TGP up significantly, but it was basically up in the air whether this was going to be something that NVIDIA would allow to release or whether it was just for testing purposes. Again, according to videocards.com, it is actually something that's going to launch. Now let's talk about the 4080, and this is actually kind of eyebrow raising. It's AD103, the other one of course was 102, and it's AD103-300. 9,728 CUDA cores. The clock frequency is pretty much the same, 2,505 megahertz. 16 gigabytes of GDDR6X memory. However, this time the memory is clocked faster, 23 Gbps. The TGP is 340 watts, but can be cranked up to 516. Again, that's maximum power limit. I've got a lot to say here, and I'm t just saving it for a moment longer because there's also an RTX 4080 12 gigabyte. Now this is cut down further, as you probably can imagine. It's based on AD104 400, 7,680 CUDA cores. The good news is it does boost higher. It's 2610. The memory capacity is 12 gigabytes and utilizes GDDR6X 21 Gbps modules. The TGP is 285 watts. Again, though, it can go higher up to 366. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm actually relatively surprised that there is such a gap between the 4090 as well as the 4080 16 gigabyte. The 4080 12, I'm just, for the sake of all of our sanity, I'm just gonna say 16 and 12 rather than 4080 because I think we're all gonna just go nuts if I keep saying that. At <laughs> least I'm gonna go insane. Um, so basically speaking, there is a massive gap there, at least in my personal opinion. Um, the earlier reports were that the 4080 was a little higher in terms of the number of CUDA cores. So this is significant. Of course, it doesn't necessarily tell the whole story. There's a plethora of other stuff, quote unquote, which is going to make a card faster or slower. For example, how much utilization do all of those cores receive? Is there, for example, a memory bandwidth issue? What about the amount of cache on chip? 
What about the actual boost frequency? Like, yeah, sure, something's rated to X speed, but as we all know, the boost behavior of a GPU, just because something's rated at that speed, doesn't mean it actually clocks to that speed. The RTX 3080, for example, that I've got, clocks much higher, the same thing for a 6800 XT that we were given, and so on and so on and so on. So it doesn't necessarily mean a whole a huge amount. But what I have heard is that the RTX 4080 uh, Ti is almost assured, as I'm pr pretty sure most of you guys can imagine, and according to the specifications that I have so far, do bear in mind though, of course, Nvidia changed the specifications like I do my socks or underwear, the RTX 4080 Ti is gonna be based on AD102, as you can probably imagine. Now, it comes with 20 gigabytes of memory, and the number of SMs is either 116 or 118. So again, this would be quite comfortably in the same kind of ballpark as what you would expect for a TI product. It's much closer, of course, in performance, at least according to the specifications, although we don't have the clock frequency to the 4090 than it is the 4080. Now, this is speculative on what I'm about to say, so please do not like, crucify me if I'm wrong here, but speculatively, I'm gonna say that the 4090 is gonna be maybe 15 to 1600 US dollars. I've heard tons of different prices with the 4090. I've heard 15, 1600 US dollars all the way up to 2000 bucks, but again, prices can change last minute. However, I think that the 4080 and 4080 12 gigabyte models are probably gonna be significantly cheaper. I think Nvidia are launching the 4090 probably to get performance advantage over AMD. But again, it's really difficult to say because I've got some people swearing to me that N31 in particular does beat RTX 40 and rest of performance. Frankly, I'm only gonna believe something when I actually physically see the benchmarks at this point. I've seen, of course, along with many of you, the benchmarks and performance at RTX 4090, but how this translates in competitiveness to N31, honestly don't know. A small update though to the topic I covered yesterday, uh, sorry, a couple of days ago regarding path tracing. Uh, this was something, of course, that was leaked quote unquote from a um, board partner of uh, NVIDIA. And it does mention path tracing. I actually got it confirmed, quote unquote, by a source. They have been pretty accurate previously. And they basically told me that NVIDIA will be pushing path tracing with RTX 40. Um, I don't have all of the info. Um, it was kind of just a passing comment. But what I was essentially uh, given as a very brief explanation is it's a mixture of major improvements in RT performance in hardware, but also some significant changes in the software. Again, it's gonna take a while for games to actually use path tracing, like, you know, ray tracing, for example, or even unified pipeline in graphics back in the day, or, you know, DirectX 12 or whatever. Just because something is technically supported in hardware, it doesn't mean it's gonna just be like a feature that every single, you know, game suddenly starts to use. But it is important, I think, that the industry does start to move towards these new standards. It's gonna be interesting to see how all of this comes to pass. Another small thing, and this is again a tease from NVIDIA themselves, the GeForce Twitter. You'll see, well, basically on their GeForce Twitter, there's a, you know, they've been doing all of these teasers and countdowns to the event, which is gonna be just under a week from now. And there's a note on the monitor, and it says 208, 629, and 7538. Now, um, I don't know if the person who told me this in a DM wants me to credit them, so I'm not going to. Uh, because they probably wouldn't want me to. Um, so, but they basically told me they think it means 208% increase in compute performance, 629 mm squared, and 75.38 billion transistors. I think it was Kopitai 7 Kimi who recently mentioned that 75 billion was accurate for the transistor count. So I'm willing to say that this is probably about what you would expect. Again, this is not really a leak. I'm just putting in here, well, just because really I'm nice to you guys. I'll also add, I have also heard that there's going to be quite a gap in AMD's own specifications for its GPUs as well. Although honestly, I've heard quite mixed things. So just to be very clear here, that would be the equivalent of the 4090 versus let's say the 4080 and AMD's own um, SKUs. 
But uh, I'm probably going to discuss that more in another video because obviously things can change because we're nowhere close to launch at the moment for um, RDNA 3. The last thing I'd just like to briefly mention is actually what one Raichu has discovered. Um, I'll leave a link to his uh, tweet in the video description along with WCCF Tech, who are the ones who, well, I first spotted it, even though I do um, follow Raichu. Uh, basically, there's a nice comparison between the Zen 4 processors as well as Intel's. Um, you can read on screen yourself. I'm not going to read out all of this because oh, I'm just going to be here until tomorrow. But um, long story short, it seems that IPC-wise, and IPC is kind of a meme at this point because, again, what are we discussing? What applications? How many cores? Blah, blah, blah. Um, but it does seem like the two are going to be quite close to one another. It's going to be really interesting, to be honest, to see how... AMD as well as Intel market these. I'm actually quite excited to see what Raptor Lake can do. Um, I think that Raptor Lake is going to be an interesting processor. I think Zen 4 to me, it looks cool, but I'm much more excited to see the V caches. With that said, it'll also be interesting to see how the V cache versus the regular vanilla versions compare to one another in different applications. Um, Again, I recently leaked that it's between 10 to 20% on average improvement in performance on games, depending on the SKU, as well as the application, the game, and so on. But whether A, those numbers are genuine, and B, how that compares to other non-gaming applications, I honestly do not know. I'm going to be very interested, though, to see how all of this plays out. Like, obviously, at the end of the day, Intel, as well as AMD, are in a very interesting position. Um, for example, when we saw Intel previously compete with, let's say, the 11th generation processors, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I don't know about compete. Like, compete actually is like, I don't know, it's, it's like me saying to you, well, I'm going to compete with someone. They've got like a tank and, you know, a helicopter and an entire army. And I'm just looking at them menacingly with like, I don't know, a, a paper airplane or something like that. That's pretty much the level of competition we were looking at. But this time, it's actually different. I can actually imagine there's going to be um, a lot of discussion on what's the better route to take. Particularly when it comes to the mid-range. Um, AMD are going to be soon, this is another piece of news, I'm just throwing it in here. Uh, better, you know, clarifying their mid-range board options. Um, at the end of the day, of course... One benefit that Intel has is the fact that DDR4 is a thing, and you can also upgrade, you know, your current um, older Lake processor. Although I'd argue that if you have older Lake, the only reason you'd probably upgrade um, is maybe like to kind of go up a skew. Like, for example, I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just talking BS and you guys can let me know down below. But, I mean, personally, I don't think many people are going to be like, well, hey, I've got like a, a 12600. I'm going to upgrade to like a 13600. I mean, yeah, sure, you do get the extra um, cores and everything, but it's not really a meaningful upgrade. So I think for a lot of people upgrading to either 13th generation or Zen 4, I think it's going to be a case of like you're buying from scratch, but if you've got relatively competent uh, DDR4 memory, it's probably going to be enough to power something like a, you know, like a a mid-range uh, Raptor Lake processor. I certainly wouldn't want to, like, try and put, like, a 13900K on, like, you know, DDR4, uh, DDR4 3200, but... Um, I guess we'll see. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video and my rambling. Apologies for not being on camera for this one. It's just kind of one of those days where stuff's happening, and yeah. Anyway, take care of yourselves, have an amazing day. Stay safe, bye for now.